では失礼今後とも黒いプロのプロジェクトフェアリーを頼みますおや高木のところの飼い犬くんじゃないかふん<笑>君もテレビ局に差し入れかいまあバレなければそれぐらいのことはやってもいいとは思っているけれどでは失礼君なんかと話しても無駄だ。無駄だ。無駄だ。無駄だ。無駄だ。無駄だ。無駄だ。無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄無駄。As a Japanese developer, of course you want to reach out to more of your Japanese audience. Something portable, like on the PSP. PSP was quite popular in Japan at the time. On February 19th, 2009, three versions of Idol Master SP were released. The SP games are downgraded remakes, so to speak. It may share a lot of assets from the Xbox 360 games, but a straight port is too much for the PSP to handle. The models had to be downgraded, but they were not lifted straight out of the arcade version. To compensate for the lack of polygons, the facial expressions are emphasized instead. This game marks Hibiki and Takane's p r o p e r debut. Both of them had actually been planned since the arcade game, but because of memory limitations, the two of them did not make the cut. Hibiki Ganaha, voiced by Numakara Manami, the wild, cyan, confident idol. Reliable and multi talented. Just leave it to her and she will do it with flying colors. She tends to get pretty lonely though. She has a lot of pets too, notably her dog, Inumi. Takane Shijo, voiced by Hara Yumi, the Magenta Regal Fairy. She's a mysterious, red as odd, idol. There are a lot of things one can speculate about her, such as she came from the moon. She is quite polite and well reserved. There are three versions of Idol Master SP akin to Pokemon games Perfect Sun, which is Hibiki, Missing Moon, which is Miki, and Wandering Star, which is Takane. The main difference of the versions are different main rivals and the idols available to produce within the version. In Perfect Sun, you can produce Haruka, Makoto, and Yayoi. In Wandering Star, you can produce Iori, Yukiho, and Ami and Mami. In Missing Moon, you can produce Chihaya, Ritsuko, and Azusa. There are two produce modes Story Produce and Free Produce. Free Produce is the produce mode found in the Xbox 360 game. The game will set no rank quota. By week 52, your idol will have to do the farewell concert. On produce mode, there are rank up limits. If you can't reach the rank by the deadline, you can retry from the last rank up. Since the story produce is more guided and the resulting ending when you clear the playthrough is consistent per character, story produce is more beginner friendly. Other than that, the game content, auditions and all, are identical to the Xbox 360 game. Because of PSP limitations, you can only have solo units in the game. The character models seem to be too detailed for its own good. The game runs on 30 FPS, and on consoles, it's a standard for Idol Master games to run on 60 FPS. Having a duo or trio will make the game unpresentable, it seems. The game has a promise system, involving a system where you should play the game at a certain time based on the PSP's internal clock. When you fulfill it, the idol's tension will rise. It's cute, to say the least. This promise system does not get brought up often in subsequent games. Since this is the PSP and it's a portable system, you can play versus humans online. But you can play against your friends via LAN play. There is not much benefit to fight against other people, so the PSP version is quite single player oriented. One of the highlights of the game is the contained story content where the producer gets to talk with someone other than their own idol, the rival. It's refreshing to be able to see the rival side of things. On a writing perspective, with the presence of the rivals, the idols get the opportunity to express their forte too. For example, Yayoi's blatant naivety and purity even after getting compared to a hamster, and Ritsuko showing her maternity to now rival Miki. It opens up more writing opportunities to expand the characters. This is the game where 961 Production and the famous infamous president Kuroi Takao makes his appearance. On an overall writing perspective, he's more of a joke than an antagonist, if anything. With his flamboyance and arrogance, it's really fun to pick the choice where he gets to lower his guard and get picked on. How the character is voiced contributes greatly to his memorability. The important thing to note in Idol Master SP games is when it's time for the choices, the time limit number is not shown. This mechanic is a remnant of its arcade game roots, you see. Well, just remember that there is an invisible timer when it's time to make choices. You can watch the MVs and set up performances freely in the office mode. You can even have the rivals perform too. Good to know the game has the convenience life for you has. In MVs, the camera can be set to display the game vertically. 
This is a blessing for the PSP version since it's quite easy to turn the PSP screen vertically. It can be said that the decision to have different versions was controversial. To enjoy the entire experience of Idolmaster SP, you have to purchase all three versions. Plus, people have compared Idolmaster SP to a similar game on the PSP, albeit the game was released a year later, Dream Club Portable. People wonder if Idolmaster SP could actually have fit all of its contents to one UMD. On the technological side of that argument, Dream Club Portable was released a year later. That game received more technological support for data compression as well. Also, each version contains up to 1.1 gigabytes. UMD can only contain up to 1.8 gigabytes. When all the versions are combined, it is possible that the entire game, complete with all the rival storylines, wouldn't fit in a single UMD. To add more to the frustration, to be able to access the secret true ending, you have to produce all 9 idols among the 3 versions too. Though one fresh PSP game costs 5,800 yen or so, console games tend to be around 7,200 yen. Thankfully, the contents of each version are distinct enough so that versioning could have been done worse. Miki is one of the most controversial aspects of the game. Idol games that have recurring characters like Idolmaster was close to non-existent at the time. Meanwhile, change of roster is not uncommon in video games. It can be quite mixed. Not to mention in the game, the reason Miki defected is because the president ate her onigiri, or rice ball. She quit 765 Pro out of spite. Not a popular choice for the game's plot. Still, people appreciate the SP Games Project Fairy unit. This unit is a fan favorite. And even the decision to have any rivals at all in the center of the story received some criticism. It was believed that the point of the Idolmaster, up to that point, was interpersonal relationship and growth with the idol. Having to fight an external force hampering that aspect was not welcomed by some of the longtime fans. That being said, all three of the games are competent, and that's all that matters. These games are even what people would suggest for newcomers. Bless the PSP that it's not region locked. You can get the physical copies of secondhand for around $15. Prefer the digital and more convenient route without having to switch to UMDs? Playing the game on the Vita and buying them digitally is a good way to play the games as well. The image quality gets a boost on the Vita, and on Japan, PSN, the games only cost 2800 yen each. Making a Japanese PSN account is quite easy, and you can buy the yen vouchers easily too. If you want a game to satiate your itch of play through long rivals, they are the very games for that. At this point, the series was already 4 years old. In both the world of video gaming and an idol series especially, this is quite an impressive feat. But surely using the same characters again and again with the same setup would make this series go stale. With that, the initiative to expand the Idolmaster series further, Second Vision, had started. The first game to be labeled with Second Vision is the Idolmaster Dearly Stars, released on September 17th, 2009 for the Nintendo DS. Dearly Stars is abbreviated as DS. Quite a common practice for having the word DS or DS abbreviations for game titles on a DS. About this game's conception, this game is unique because it was produced by personnel outside of the core Idolmaster team instead of the series team. Whether the proposal included the proposition to have the Second Vision happen or not is unknown, but this is the first Idolmaster game that received the branding of Second Vision. Despite being labeled as a Second Vision game, the designs used were still First Visions. For example, Azusa still retains her long hair and Makoto still has her short hair. Content and timeline-wise, this game is a First Vision game. One of the main goals of this game is to expand the world of the Idolmaster as a series. One of the ways to do this was to introduce a new agency in this game, 876 Pro. It served to enable the game to see the 765 Pro idols in the eyes of someone outside of the agency as well. This is also the first game in the series to have the player play another agency outside of 765 Pro. 876 Pro is spelled Banamu Pro. Banamu, Banam, Bandai Namco. This is the number Banam used to represent themselves. This is the number for Bandai Namco's official channel name in YouTube too, 876 TV. As you can guess, the game has the 876 Pro idols instead of the 765 Pro idols. Ahitaka, voiced by Haruka Tomatsu, the red hot blooded girl. She is the daughter of a former superstar idol, Mai Hidaka. She is very loud, which makes her good at many kinds of television shows. It can be noted that her mother, Mai Hidaka, had an important role for the series' world. The main clue is how young Mai Hidaka is as a mother compared to her daughter's age, used by some prequel mangas. Eri Mizutani, voiced by Kana Hanazawa, the blue shy idol. She was pretty well known as an internet celebrity with the alias Ellie. Quitting her life as an internet idol and shut-in, she seeks to open herself up to the world. Ryo Ahizuki, 
voiced by Sanpei Yuko, is the green star. Calm, soft, and collected, he is pretty much the opposite of his cousin, Ritsuko Akizuki. Because of his feminine looks, he got tangled to become a female idol despite his wishes to strive as a male idol. He is the first playable male idol in the series, although he has to do things as a female idol. Yes, his main point is cross-dressing and hiding his true identity from the public. The 13765 Pro Idols are the Dearly Star Seniors, seeming to be set after the events of SP except for Hibiki and Takane's history, which were established to have had no connections to 961 Pro in this game. One interesting thing to note is at the time of Dearly Star's development, Idol Master SP was still in development as well. As the result, Hibiki and Takane's role in the story is very limited. Instead of playing as a producer, you play as the idols you choose to play instead. They have their own storylines, and unlike the 765 Pro games, Dearly Stars focuses heavily on the story instead of the challenges as a raising game. Such elements still exist, but their role for the game as a whole is minimal. The game is also commonly regarded as easy in comparison to other Idol Master games. As such, the game is remembered more as a visual novel instead of a raising game. As a story-heavy visual novel, despite the reduction of playable characters from the 9 usual to 3, the richness of the content for each character is significantly increased. The game's story route is divided into episodes or arcs that are within the idol's rank. The factor that decides which route to access is the audition result. Speaking of audition, this is how the game's gameplay works. For each episode, the idol's activities are done per in-game days. You can go have a lesson, do promotion, or take the audition. On every Sunday, you can choose how to spend the day off, watch the other two idols perform or stay indoors. Watching their performances will increase the tension of the idol you're currently playing as. Staying indoors will give no benefit, but since the performance of the other idols are not skippable, it may be a wise choice to stay indoors if you want to fast forward things. Sunday is where you get new items too, like accessories, costumes, and fan mail. On each Monday, you can change songs, adjust the choreography, and alter the camera work. Quite adjustable compared to the 765 Pro games, assuming you have unlocked many of the options. It plays a role on the stats too, so it's best to utilize this feature. Speaking of MVs, you can watch the performance freely outside of the main playthrough. As a DS game, the game supports touchscreen, especially for the touch commutes. The usual commute choices and its time limit returns too. The commutes are there to increase the idol's tension and stock up memory appeal count. The game still has the usual lesson minigames. The minigames are new, taking advantage of the DS's touch capabilities. They are based on other Namco properties. For the vocal minigame, it is based on Mojipitan. For the dance minigame, it is based on Taiko no Tatsujin. For the visual minigame, it is based on Katamari Damashi. As usual, the vocal minigame is not import friendly. Be careful. The audition is quite simplified. The main goal of the auditions is to raise the pass rate as high as possible. You can consume memory appeals to raise your chances. Getting good on the roulette will increase the rate. The higher the demanded stat, the easier it is to raise the gauge. Getting bad will decrease the pass rate instead. The thing is, the pass rate is 90% at maximum and 10% at minimum. So, when you don't get the desired result, it's best to reload the save file. Also, the auditions feature no rivals gameplay-wise. Rivals are mainly only within the story. Depending on the result of the audition, you will get access to different episode routes. In the end, episodes of the rank losing the audition in that episode can result in the ending of that rank. Otherwise, the story will progress to the next rank. Before the final rank episodes, however, Losing does not mean the end of the playthrough. It will simply make you access different episodes. Due to the complexity of the routes, you may want to consult a walkthrough and see which episode route you want to access. Check if your desired episode requires you to lose the audition or not. Visual novels where losing can merely mean a simple route change are quite unique. Similar to SP, you can only have a solo unit. This is due to the hardware limitations of the DS. But using the wireless features, it is possible to have a performance that syncs with other DSs. Also, this is the first Idol Master game where the camera can be positioned behind the idol, letting you see the audience part of the stage. Speaking of high emphasis on story, most of important NPCs are not mere silhouettes. Most of them don't have any voice, save for the 765 Pro Idols, but usually such NPCs are only depicted as silhouettes in the series. This is unique to Idol Master DS. The game has 10 songs, 7 of them are unlocked at the start, but one of the most amazing things in regards to the song in this game is that the 3 image songs of the idols which are locked at the start, are tied to the story of the characters, including why they get unlocked. One of the examples is Ryo's Dazzling World. Within the story, Ryo commissioned the song from the legendary composer to raise his chances to overcome Chihaya, the vocal goddess, in the audition. It gives such songs a feeling of intimacy. 
The amount of available songs can be said to be rather thin for an Idol Master game. There are 10 songs in total, and 3 idols that get to sing them. The total number of unique vocal tracks is 30. Considering the crazy amount of voice acting in this game for the 876 Pro and 765 Pro Girls alone, though, this can still be considered as an impressive DS title. Despite the lack of voices from the NPCs, some of the characters are voiced in drama CDs. Among the important NPCs, only Manami Okamoto and Igarashi don't have a voice. The game uses a voice compression technology for the DS, which made it possible to include a hefty amount of voice data within the DS cartridge. The game itself is 256 MB, which is a lot for a DS game. The existence of such technology was even cited by Kururu in Keroro RPG's advertising, which featured a high degree of full voice acting too, and as such, used the voice compression technology as well. If you're wondering, the Keroro RPG game was developed by Namco Tail Studio, which made it possible for the Kororo game to reference other Namco games. Game no event wa anime fan mo nattoku no face chat event rashii ne. De Idol Master Diary Stars to onaji onsei ashuku gijutsu de taireu no voice o saisei kanuu to. In contrary to today's trends, Ryo's presence as a male within the series that mainly features only female idols received warm reception. Though there is an interesting remark from Namco that there won't be any cross-dressing male idols in Idol Master 2 and beyond. Still, there is one cross-dressing male idol that appears in Side M, Idol Master's male idol branch. Sadly, at the time of the game's release, the game was regarded as uninteresting, which led to its poor sales. But anywhere you look, the game is not bad by any means. It clearly is a competent and vibrant visual novel game. The game was reported to have sold poorly, but there are more things at play than meets the eye. The real main reason of this is because there weren't many copies shipped. Based on available data, the game only had 55,740 copies shipped. The game's total sales is 51,537. That is 92% of the total shipment, so it can be said that the game actually sold like hotcakes. 876 Pro as a whole was received well. In fact, many people requested to have a remake, re-release, or a sequel for the game. The CD sold well too, but as of today, there are no more 876 Pro games made ever since. It was stated that the main reason this branch is discontinued, so to speak, was simply because the development team lacks the manpower to develop another 876 Pro game, not for sales reasons. Though it is sad that there won't be any more appearances of 876 Pro aside from guest appearances and Ryo's appearance inside him as a male idol, at least Bandai Namco themselves don't see 876 Pro as a black mark to Idol Master's series resume. And the worst news of all, because of the low amount of copies of this game that exist in this world, Idol Master DS is the rarest Idol Master game yet. This is compounded with the fact that there hasn't been any form of remakes, reprints, or digital releases of the game. You may need to shell out around $65 on eBay to get a copy of this game. And to play it, thankfully on the DS and the DS Lite, you can play this game in any region just fine. But DSi features region lock, so you need a Japanese DSi to play it on DSi. There are several DSi enhanced features for the game, so the DSi and 3DS is the ideal choice of platform to play it on. This little star of the series is a game that people hold dearly, so if you think the game is worth digging in your wallet deeper, you won't be disappointed. With this perception, the game would have a dark future. However, it would not be the last time we saw these three.